What's going on guys? John Elder here from Konami.com and in this video, I want to talk about radio buttons with Kinter and Python. All right, in the last video, we talked about frames. In this video, I'm going to talk about radio buttons, which is, are just these sort of round buttons with text next to them. They're used for forms and all kinds of other things. Very useful. And they're a little bit trickier than some of the other widgets we've looked at in the past. So we'll go ahead and take a look at that in this video. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, and be sure to check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube to get $22 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for a one-time fee of just $27, which is insanely cheap. So go ahead and close this. And I've created a new file. I called it radio.py, saved it into our GUI directory where we've saved all of our code in the past. And this is just the basic sort of uh, starter text that we've used in all the other courses to create just a basic, uh, you know, framework with Kinter. So what we're going to use is a radio button widget. And to do that, we just call radio button. And then much like some of the other ones we've done in the past, we will go root. And then for the text, we go equals. Um, let's go option one. And here's where it gets a little bit different. We're going to create a variable. And Kinter has sort of its own variables, Kinter variables, they're slightly different than Python variables. And I'll show you exactly what the difference is in just a minute. But we're going to assign a variable to each of these buttons, so that we know if somebody clicks on the button that gets put into the variable. So then we could take that variable and do stuff you know, with it in the future based on which button or which radio button was clicked. So this will make sense in just a bit. So uh, let's call this um, R, let's just call it R, right? You can call it anything you want. And the value, let's put this as one. So this is option one. So when somebody clicks on that, we want the value to be one because it's option one. Yeah, you can put anything you want, but we'll just do one. So we're also going to need to do some other stuff to this, but this will work just for now. Now I'm just going to pack this on the screen. Usually we do two sentences or two lines of code, one to create the thing and then one to put it on the screen. But you've, we've seen in the past that we can do this all in one line just by going calling dot pack uh, on the thing. And that should work. Okay, so I'm going to just copy this and create a second one. And we'll call this one option two, and the value from this will be two. And we're just going to pack this onto the screen. So let's see, I think that is pretty much it. Now we need to sort of define this variable. So like I said, this is going to be a Kinter variable and Kinter variables are a little bit different. Uh, they look the same as in you just call them like you would a Python variable. But here, we want this to be an integer, because the value we've assigned to it is either one or a two, and a one or a two is an integer, right? So the variable needs to be an integer variable, because we want to do numbery things to it, if we want to do numbery things. So we're going to call int variable, and then this function. Now this function allows Kinter to keep track of changes over time to this variable. So when we click on a thing, it'll know that. And I think we've looked at this in the past with other things in order to use this, we don't just call the R variable, we call R dot get remember, we want to get whatever the variable is at the moment. So if somebody clicks on a different radio button, we want to be able to get that right. So that's why we're using these instead of just regular Python variables. That's just a sort of a function of radio buttons. So let's see, we have one, we have two. this. Now we've done a one and a two here, right? If we wanted to pass a string into this, we could call like this, right? And then instead of integer, it's str variable, it's a string variable, right? But in this case, we want to do integers. And after I do this one, I'll show you another way to do this because there's a couple of ways to do it. And uh, we'll see this. So let's save this as radio.py. Let's open up our thing here. And let's run radio.py. Oops. What have we done? Name radio button is not defined. Did I spell button wrong? Oh, I did spell button wrong. Should be lowercase b. All right, so save this. 
Come back here and run it again. Okay, pull this over. So you see we have option one and option two, and this works, but it doesn't actually do anything. And we can't really tell if we've done anything, right? So we need to have this actually do something so that we can confirm, confirm that we did this correctly. So I'm going to create a, a quick label. Let's just call it my label and set this equal to a label. And we want this on root and we want the text to equal what? R dot get, oops, R dot get. Now we wanna go my label dot pack. Okay, so let's save this and this shouldn't work yet for a specific reason and we'll see. So right off the bat, we have zero because we haven't actually um, set this yet. And we can if we want. So we can close this, come back here, and we can go r dot set. And inside of here, we could say two, for instance. So if we save this and run it. You remember these Python or these Kinter variables, you can set and you can get. I think we looked at that in a prior video. You can see now it's two. And two has been selected automatically. That's what happens when you set it, right? So if we go up here, this doesn't yet change because we haven't created a function to update this thing if it changes. So we can close that and do that right now. So let's create a function. We'll define and let's call this um, clicked. I don't know. Doesn't really matter. And now here we want to change this just paste this in here. And we want to pass, um, I don't know, value. And now this will be value. So what we need to do is when one of these is clicked, we need to pass that into this function and then update our label. And we've seen this already in the past by using the command. We use this when we create buttons and, and do that. So we can go command, and we can go lamb, Duh, we've done this in the past. And so what do we want here? We want to call clicked and we wanna pass in here our, our value, but we need to get it, right? So inside of here, we go r.get and pass that. So then I think we could just copy this whole thing and paste it onto the other radio button as well. Okay, so if we save this, hopefully I did that right. It's starting to all get jumbled together. All right, so we see it's already on two because we've set it to be two. If we click on one, boom, one appears. We click on two again, two appears. Very cool, pretty easy. And we could do the same thing with a button real quick. Uh, let's just throw a button up here and let's go uh, my button equals a button. It's in root and the text equals click me and the command equals, actually I'm just gonna copy this whole thing. That's the exact command that we want. Uh, I think that is right. Yep, I'm just counting parentheses. And then if we put this on the screen, my oops, button dot pack. All right, so we save this and run it real quick. We see option one, if we click it, boom, it goes to one, two, if we click it, two. Okay, so either way this works and that's how you do that. Now, in the future, anytime we want to use that value of the radio button, we can by either calling r.get or if it's inside of a function using you know whatever value we've passed in, whatever keyword for that. So that's cool. So that's one way to do it and this works, right? but these are just two buttons. You may have like 10 and you may not want to do all 10 of these, right? So in that case, we can sort of use a loop in order to do this. And so that's what I'm gonna do now very quickly. Maybe not so quickly, this might take a bit. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead, well, let's just, 
comment out those. And we'll leave this for now. So what we can do now is create a Python list. And I'm going to call this modes. And inside of here, this is just a Python list. I'm going to create some tuples for the, the radio buttons that we want to create, right? So let's create, oh, I don't know, four of them. Okay. Now inside of here, we need two values. One, two. And I'm just going to copy these and paste and paste. So let's say we're creating a, a menu for a pizza place online or something, and we want to select which type of pizza we want on, or which type of topping we want on our pizza. So we might have pepperoni. We might have what? Cheese, uh, mushroom. What's another type of pizza? Onion, is that a pizza? <laughs> and then, so this is the thing that's gonna show up on the screen. This is the actual value that we're gonna pass. In here, it was this value right here when we had one and two. But instead of numbers this, this time, since we did numbers last time, integers, let's do strings this time. So I'm just gonna copy this. We want the value to be the same thing as the thing. Oops, so copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. And modes, I called it modes because it's, the, it's a mode of a radio button. You can call this anything you want. If you wanted to call it toppings, you could. Um, I would call it something plural and we'll see why in just a second. So now let's get rid of this and this from the old thing. Now, just like in the last time, we need to set up a, a Python, a Kinter variable. So instead of calling it R, what should we call it? Let's call it pizza. And this time it's a string variable, str. I think that'll work. Actually, I think it's string variable, string var. Oops, pizza. Yeah, so let's do that. And we want to set the first one dot set. We'll set that to what? Let's let's make the first one pepperoni. Okay. Oops. So now we need to loop through all of these things and put them on the screen. So I'm going to go for text and mode in modes. This is just a basic loop, right? And we want to create a radio button. So let's go radio button like we did last time. And then we want this in root, of course. Now, remember last time we created a text, a variable and a value, we need to do the same thing. So this time the text will equal text, because we're calling text. In our loop, we're calling on well, this needs to be all capitalized modes. So we're going to loop through modes, which is this, and we're going to take each of these values. So this will be text and this will be uh, what did we call this one text and mode. So this will be text and this will be mode. This will be text and this will be mode. This will be text and this will be mode. So we want the first value right here text equals to text, right? And we want the variable to always be pizza. That's this thing right here, right? And we want the value in that variable to equal mode, which is this thing, this thing, this thing, and this thing, right? So, okay, now we can dot pack this. Oops. If I could type, <laughs> there we go. And that should work, right? So let's just save this real quick to See, actually, we need to change this also. Uh, and this pizza, pizza.get. Okay, so let's save this and see if this works. Oh, we got an error. What did we do? Uh, self option, blah, blah, blah. Oh, I misspelled variable. What line? I don't know. Let's look at this. There it goes. Variable, <laughs> variable, there we go. Cannot type today, it's Friday here in Vegas. Can't type on a Friday, 
you kidding me? Okay, so now we see we've got pepperoni, cheese, mushroom, and onion. And the first thing is per pepperoni because we set that when we started. And if we click on this, it, sh it goes pepperoni. If we go cheese, we click, boom, cheese. Notice it's not doing it when I click on this because this time around we didn't put a command. Like here we did a command when you click on the actual button. We're not doing that this time just, just to save time since we've already done it once. Now we're just doing it when you click the actual button, right? So let's see. Let's take this and go anchor equals W. And let's close. Actually, see these are all centered, right? If we close, close this and run it again. All right. Now they're all anchored to the west, to the left. Looks better. And in fact, we can get rid of this pepperoni too, because we don't really need it at the moment. So down here on our label, in fact, we can just get rid of this if we want to, right? Oh, that's the button, uh, label, label. All right, so save this, run it one last time. So pepperoni, cheese, click. Cheese, mushroom, click, mushroom, onion, click, onion. So this last time is just sort of a fancier way to do it, just doing a simple loop. It's easier than, you know, creating four of these radio button things. We could have done that too. That, that would work. Uh, this is just sort of a little bit easier. And like I said, I called this modes. We could call this toppings. And we just change this to toppings, right? And instead of mode, maybe we call it what? Topping, topping in toppings. And we change it here to topping. Save this, give it a run to make sure I didn't screw something up there. Cheese, boom, cheese, mushroom, mushroom, back to pepperoni, pepperoni. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward, pretty cool. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, and check out Codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube to get $22 off membership. So you pay just $27 to access all my courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 50,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from Codemy.com. We'll see you in the next video.